If it is one thing that is super cool in business is that if someone loves to interview people and love to pick people's brain and then I can pick their brain, that is when you really can compound learning. And today we're going to pick the brain of Henriette. She has one of the best and biggest business podcasts in entirety of Norway. She's now chasing her dream and not even chasing it. She is catching her dream and moved to New York to do podcasting, to do her business, to do her coaching and so much more that you're now going to learn about in this episode. And it's not only going to be her story, it's also going to be secrets, it's going to be follow-up questions and it's going to be things that you can implement in your business either if you are a boy or a girl. So with that being said, let's jump right into the interview. Let's get into it. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, I'm super, super honored to to have you on today and I'm super excited. I have a lot of different notes here that I'm going to to take you through. So I'm uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, and, And first question is, who is Henriette and who or what made you into the person that that you are today why i am the person i am today that's um that's a hard question to answer i always ask this question to my guests so (laughs) they they get a little bit like whoa what am i gonna say uh, in terms of answering that because i think the way you become as a person is is like a lot of different challenges and a lot of different things that you've been through uh, through your whole life right all the way from the upbringing until now so I grew up in a really safe environment with my family with my mom and dad and my little sister um, Camilla and I've been living in the same house since 1997 since I was born um, but I have never been this popular girl uh, that has had a lot of friends and always been going to this parties and so I've kind of in my in my in my childhood I had five close friends and we were really childish so we were dancing in the forest and we were always exploring new ways of of being creative and just playing around um so that's that's my childhood and I was always been very creative and sportive and I always wanted to do the things that was fun you know yeah Um, I want to have a life full of fun and that was when I wanted to start dancing I wanted to start like dancing school professionally instead of doing you know um, regular school for for starting your education so then I said to my mom mom I want to dance and mom said like why not just do Mm -hmm. it that's fun to do the stuff that you want to do and the things that you think are fun that you think are fun Uh, and then I did that for three years almost became a professional dancer and kind of got that um, interest for always expressing myself in different ways. So I think that's the red thread in everything uh, that I'm doing, you know, expressing something valuable, expressing something with your body, with your mind or with your heart. Um, and since then, I I also figured that I want to make money. Mm. I don't want to, you know, dance around and just fool around. I also want to make a business. So that was early on when I started my dancing career, I, I, I thought like, this is not my life. I always wanted to be this woman with this tight, um, my head up tight and suits walking into the office, you know, making a lot of money, having freedom, having financial independence. Um, so that was when I started studying real estate mm. um, at BI Norwegian Business School in Bergen. And, and that's where my... I started, you know, flourishing. Uh, I realized that I actually could do stuff. I realized that I had a personality that was able to, you know, I was able to connect with people very easily. Uh, I got a lot of friends. I suddenly became more and more popular. And since I I didn't, I, like, I wasn't popular when I was younger, when I started realizing that I could actually do stuff with with me as just a person, that actually got to me, you know, and that's really hard when 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 you're young and you don't get that much attention and suddenly you get it from some kind of reason. I, I couldn't I didn't realize why, but in some some ways you get addicted to this, right? And this might also be something that drives you forward. Um mm. And that's probably also why I was interested in real estate, because as a real estate agent, you need to build your own network. 
you need to, you know, get out there and network with people and do stuff that is probably not as traditional. Um, but but I worked hard and I, I got good grades and I wanted to do more of studying and just, you know, finish my education. So I've never had any years off. I've just been working, working, working. I think that can be a red thread in me as well. I'm always, you know, working hard. If there's something I want, I'm, I'm going for it. Mm. So that was when I studied strategy and leadership in Copenhagen, in Copenhagen Business School. So I got into that school prestige school and I was so you know shocked that people were better than me in 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 that school so I was I was really struggling when I studied my master's degree because everyone everyone was better than me so I just needed to you know work my ass off and then and, and finish that degree even though I kind of hated it I didn't really like it I just did it I just finished it you know mm. um, and then I started my job uh, in a real estate property technology company as the head of sales, where I then worked for a small team. We were 10 people, but I was the only woman at the team. And that made me question some things. And that is kind of the start of my whole podcast career, you could say. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Because now you're inspiring so many, so many women. And it's so, so amazing to, to see and when it came to like studying or, or going into that kind of business route, did it start even earlier or was it like after like high school in Norway that you saw that you can do something more or where, where did that come in? Do you have any relatives doing something similar? Did you see it on social media or where did you come over business for the first time? Hmm. Well, my, my, my dad and my mom is academics. My dad is a dentist and my mom is an architect. My dad has always had his own business. So I think, it also comes from there. I think yeah. having seen close the resilience and what it actually takes to to build a business, it's hard work and it will not come for free. You mm. will need to work for it. There is there is no elevator to success. You need to take the stairs. And I think I learned that from, from early on and also not being popular, being a person that needs to work for having good people in your life so I guess I, I always I do this today this day today like I always make sure that my friends uh, and the people I surround myself with that I'm you know always giving energy to them and and also make sure that they give energy to me because that's really important in in you know climbing the ladder I would say mm. yeah, yeah but uh, probably inspired by my by my dad yeah yeah no, that's cool because I really like to to talk around how people got into it because so many people got into it in so many different ways because you don't just randomly choose in into this profession. It's like a, it's not even full time. It's all all the time if you really want to go far, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's really interesting. So, what do you do like more specific today? What is like, yeah, what well, what's your your what's your niche? What's your business? Um, well, what's your What's your main thing today? Yeah, let me tell you the story about how I got into it as well, because probably probably also this is also random, you know, but it, I think most people find out they want to run a business because of a problem that they're experiencing themselves. Mm. They have something that they feel inside. Either they feel like they're meant for something bigger. I always felt that I was meant for something more, but I didn't know what. But suddenly you you just go through life and then suddenly you bump into something where you think, wow, this was hard. I want to do something about this. And for me, that hard thing that I wanted to solve was that feeling I had when working for a company where I was the only woman. There were men in their 50 year, 50s and in suits and no offense to those people. I, I really love people running businesses, uh, regardless if you're a man or a woman. But being a woman in a room filled with a boardroom filled with 10 men felt really intimidating. And I also wanted to find a role model. I wanted to find someone in that industry that I could mirror myself in. You know, you you also have role models, right? To be as you have someone within social media or someone within podcasting or someone within network marketing that is doing so good and you want to become like those people. Mm. 
I couldn't find any of them in my company. So I started searching around for those people uh, on LinkedIn while I was at work. I, I found an article with a woman that was like nominated as Forbes 30 under 30 in Denmark within real estate. And I thought, wow, this is what I want to be. This is where I want to be in 10 years. So I asked her, uh, I was obviously shaking because it's not normal in Norway and Denmark to reach out to random people that you know, don't know, right? Mm. So I was shaking, writing her that message and hope she would answer me. And a couple of day later, days later, she she answered me. And I thought, why would you want to talk with me, you know? But I, but I spoke with her and she gave me kind of all this. I asked her so many questions about how she'd gotten where she's, she are today and, and all these things. And when you kind of go out there and put your curiosity out there, you get the answers that you want to know. And that was what I did. And I, I kind of started believing in myself and I started believing that I could do something more. And that was when I, I started my podcast. So these coffee meetings ended up becoming podcast interviews. Mm. Um, so I got some help. Uh, my ex-boyfriend at that time was also an entrepreneur. He also introduced me to the entrepreneurial world. You know, you sometimes you just need that one person who opens your eyes for something yeah. new. And I realized that there are so many cool, cool people within entrepreneurship. There's such a great mindset. They are working every day, resilience, consistency. I wanted to learn from them. And that was when I published my first episode from a friend that I've gotten through LinkedIn, actually. Uh, and with FaceTime back and forth. Karina, uh, she is a serial entrepreneur, lives in Oslo. And I asked her, can I interview you? And she's like, yeah, sure, just come. And then I ordered my ticket to Oslo and, and I had my iPhone, no equipment at all, but I just tried with the things that I had, you know, and um, got myself settled with Spotify. And then I had my Instagram and I just started doing it. And one guest led to another guest. And now I run number one, the number one entrepreneurial podcasts in Norway. You know, I received my first place in a couple of months, like four months ago, I think. And I don't know how that happened, but I also think I found something that people wanted to listen to. I wanted to share. And this was a problem that I wanted to solve. And I guess this feeling that I had in that boardroom is not a feeling that I only have mm. but multiple yeah. And that was why it hit so hard, I think. Yeah. I love that. I I I truly believe in the same concept that definitely a, a good tip from from there is to find a problem and then build a business around solving that problem for yourself. Um that that's truly something cool. When it mm -hmm. comes to the to the lady that you met in Copenhagen, um did she become your your mentor for for a while or is she still your mentor or what kind of well, what was the relation there for for a while? Interesting question. No one's asked me that. Um, we're still friends. Uh, we became friends afterwards. So she invited me to her birthday and she introduced me to her friends. And But then I think I outgrew her. Yeah. You know? I found new people. And I think that's how I've grown into the position where I am today, that I'm always looking for new people, always meeting new people and always, you know, finding the people that are where I want to be so I kind of went out of the real estate game so she's really good in in real estate I really have respect for her within that but I I, I quit my job so I quit my job in in January 2023 mm. after running my podcast for one year I I figured I wanted to become an entrepreneur and now I have a lot of entrepreneur role models and entrepreneur uh, friends I call all my podcast guests my friends <laughs> because we are friends because I feel like we are connecting on a different level because we are interested in the same. Yeah, that and what what's kind of your valuation of a mentorship? Because I am personally like I joined a group that's like five thousand dollars a year, and then I bought a couple of uh, I would rather say programs and modules than just courses. But courses are also great if it is from someone that truly knows what they're talking about, um, and it's impossible to price those kind of mentorships like being guided by someone with more knowledge more time in the in the industry um what what are your kind of um, kind of feelings around that kind of mentorship like how much did it meant 
Um, and do you invest in any mentorship today? And you also mentorship um, other people. And that's also something great because people should definitely, definitely see what people are doing and then learn from them. And it's just a small investment. So what's like 100%. your, yeah. A hundred percent. I completely agree. You should always search for the people that inspire you and try to talk with them and try to know how they've, you know, reached the point where they are today. Mm. And that was why I also became a coach. So I started doing this, becoming mentors for others who wanted to go into the same industry as me. Um, I got myself a coach as well. In this period, I had a really tough period when I was working full time as the head of sales in this prop tech company. I was running my podcast after five o'clock in the evening until 11, until I was going to bed. You know, I was working my ass off and I had some struggles with my personal relationship with, with my ex-boyfriend, which I'm not together with now. I had so many things going on, you know, mm. and that was when I searched for someone who could help me, you know, finding my inner calmness. And that was when I had Leanna Alexandra as my coach. Mm. So she's one of Norway's best coaches in my eyes. We really connected. We really had a good vibe when we recorded a podcast episode together. That was how we got to know each other. And then she just took me through this whole journey of, you know, getting to know myself better. What are my values? What do I really want? What is my goals? What is, where am I actually going? What do I need to do? What do I exactly need to do to reach my goals? What partnerships do I need to have? How much money do I need to make to actually be able to quit my job? Because that was my dream. I wanted to be my own boss. And now I want to help other people do that. So I learned from the best. I learned from her. And now I use her methods into how she coached me in my clients. And that's how I think you should do it. And that's the value of mentorships. Find the best. Look at them. See what they're doing. Teach what they're doing. And then you can teach that yourself. And if you want to, teach that to others. Yeah. Um, and that's how we improve because I think a lot of people are driven by helping others. Like you and me are the same in terms of I'm helping my crowd of women and you are helping your crowd of uh, men and women, you know, in through through your business and through your social media. You have a lot of inspiring content that helps a lot of people. And why are you doing it? Right. You always got to ask yourself, why are you doing the things you're doing? Mm. Because I want to help these people and you're giving value and you cannot, you know, earn money without giving value. Yeah. And what is this value? And you're asking about what the value of mentorship mentorship is. It's like almost unpriceable because it can change someone's lives. Mm. So that's yeah. my view on it. What, what do you think? I just reflect on this really good because I have multiple friends. Some of them are doing like uh, mentorship for X amount of months, X amount of weeks, like you have a time. And then others are just doing consulting for, for solving a problem or something like that. But I really like, again, let's say that you pay someone a thousand dollar to solve a problem and solving that problem will probably increase your salary or increase your happiness or increase your business volume. Uh, and let's say you increase that with a thousand dollars per month, for example, like investing a thousand dollar into a knowledge or just investing into the key that opens the door that you have just stood in front of for multiple months or even years, uh, mm -hmm. not knowing how to open and they just can talk with you for 20 minutes. So mm -hmm. for, for me, that's really interesting. And I think people should really look into it because if they're not taking action, um yeah one conversation with you for example one conversation with me and i and i updated my bio to that I, I i think i wrote something along the lines of i don't keep secrets just send me a message i'll answer your your questions mm -hmm. and for me i always give as much as i can and then i build business with the people that wants to that wants to to learn further and that's that's something that i really really value mm -hmm. i 100 percent agree like you should always always give value and Make sure that you also know your own value. Yeah. This has been really hard for me. You know, know your own worth. Know what you actually are worth for other people. Because 
if you're just gonna you know run a charity and <laughs> give a lot away to people of course you should give but there's also a a limit on how much you should give before you start overworking yourself and getting burned out so i always think that you should take care of yourself first and then help others it's like you need to put on that uh, breathing mask before you can help yeah. others right yeah. so so there's like business is business and money is money and and you know i'm not in business to to only have fun i'm also here to have money enough to pay my rent and pay my bills and be able to actually live the life that i want yeah so there's a balance there and i think that's really hard um because of course you want to help like your heart wants to help but your brain also says you need to make money mm. yeah uh, i totally agree uh, when, when it comes to again now that we know what we want to do then it's how we're going to do it and i see again you're you're talking about it multiple times so far about content and of course, it's, it's the best way of reaching out to, to new people, reaching out to people, building the trust, getting them to know you, like you, trust you. That's one of my frameworks that, I'm, uh, that I've been taught by my mentor. Um, but I believe that a lot of people maybe think that they don't need or they are not in the category of having to create content, so they don't do it. But what do you think there should because I believe everyone should should create content in some way for your business in some shape or form. Um, mm. How do you use it and what do you tell others when it comes to just, just starting to do it? Mm. Yeah. Okay, so, so when I bring on new clients as a coach, I always go into them as a person. Who are you? Yeah. What are your values? What is important for you in your life? What do you want to do? If you're running a business, yes, content is a strategy, but you also need to figure out, is this something that will bring you towards your goal? So I always look at the person. What is your goal? What is your values? Are these values and goals connected? Is this something that can resonate with your persona? Why do you want to do this? And if the reason for, you know, if you want to say that you run a... Mm, yeah you could take me as an example you run a podcast business and you need to figure out why why do i want to do this my mission is to help more women take ownership in the world and how can i do that in the best possible way i can help them through private one-on-one -on -one sessions in coaching with specific tools and things they can do and how they can improve their mindset and also sharing a lot of stories and inspiration through a podcast which is uh, the business talk bus podcast that I have. So I've found two strategies on how to, you know, pursue my mission mm. and, and circling back to what was your question again? About who should do content and, and why, why people should do it. Yeah, exactly. Well, that that's my answer. You know, you should always yeah. know why, why you're doing what you're doing. And then the strategies and the content will come automatically. So if you are, for instance, a, dating coach or a relationship coach you should make content that will help your possible clients or something that will you know give value to the people you're going to talk to um mm. of course yeah yeah but content I, I thought... is a really demanding thing to do right you you want to you want to make something that that makes sense and something that you know both is giving something value, but also promoting you and your business, helping them, call to action. There is a lot of things you can talk about there. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. It's uh, it's many ways of of doing it, and it it doesn't exist any blueprint. But more and more people see, for example, what Alex Ramosi is speaking about, like this era of influencers. They really know that they should just give and give and give because. I believe that it's no secrets that you can just give out for free that will harm you later because the more you give, the more they trust you and the more they like you and then they buy from you or uh, or want your concepts because that can further implement into their businesses and stuff. So I believe just, just giving away everything for free content-wise, uh, I am at least not, not guarding any secrets in, in my contents. Uh, mm -hmm. And I see that you're doing the same, just spoiling everything on podcasts, telling secret after secret uh, yeah. that five years ago was worth tens of thousands of dollars just listening to one episode. But today is is out there because now the 
economy of the content have, have changed a lot. Agree, agree. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and when it comes to the to the podcast, that's the that, that's of course your your main objective. Um, how has it impacted when it comes to to networking with people? Because I've seen now on your Instagram stories, you're meeting. Yeah, I will say that you're almost meeting one every single day, like a new new face here and there. Um, and I think it's a it's a cool concept, as you said. Like you get into a really good relation when you do an interview and you discuss something in a podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, how, how is kind of your workflow there? You network with people, and then you you join each other's podcast, and then you become friends afterwards. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of a really good example I have with uh, with Alexa. Uh, I can take that example and also talk about how how that normally happens. Like Alexa, she is also a podcaster. She lives in New York and I was going to New York and I was introduced to her by, listen to this. (laughs) So there was a Norwegian friend, a Norwegian entrepreneur of mine, uh, entrepreneur friend of mine that I met at Startup Extreme, which is like a conference for all startup ecosystem in, in the Nordics. I met him there. I said to him, I'm going to New York soon. Do you know anyone there? No, I don't know anyone in New York, but I know someone in London. Do you want to speak with her? Yeah, sure. I'm saying yes. I'm getting on a call with her. She knows a lot of people in New York. She introduces me to Alexa. And then I meet Alexa when I'm in New York. And then we start talking. You know, I interview her. And then we we go out and, and have a, lo- a lot of fun together. And then she interviews me. So this would be like more a natural way. But Think about where it started. So it started of me taking initiative, going to this conference and then taking initiative, speaking with this person and then taking initiative again, saying what my plans are. So always when you're networking, include people in your plans. And this is where we're back again to the coaching. If you don't know what you're doing or if you don't know what you want, you cannot bring people on on your journey. Mm. Right. So being able to figure out what you want what your values are what your goals are that makes you able to actually pitch yourself and talk with people and let them in on your journey of course Mm -hmm. there will be a lot of people that will help you on the way and that will are able to introduce you to a lot of cool people and will be great but there will also be a lot of people that not that's not going to be part of your journey and that's the whole game of you know meeting new people and seeing how um, seeing how people live and learn and how you can learn from them. Um, but but a lot of times I also reach out cold, you know, to people that I want to have on as guests in, in my podcast. Um, so, so it goes both ways. Sometimes you get a warm intro and sometimes you don't. But a main thing, if we give away like a tips, for for others on on how they can, you know, improve their networking is that first you need to work with yourself, find out what you want, where are you going? What is your journey? Are you going to be, where are you going to be in the next year? Tell people about your vision. Be open about your dreams. I told this guy, my dream is to move to New York. Can you help me? Right? And Mm. then I did that. But if you don't know where you're going, people will not be able to see what they can help you with because people want to help you. People want to give away advice like me and you. People, We want to help people, right? But I cannot help someone who doesn't know where they want to go. But yeah, that's what I do as a coach. But (laughs) it all starts with you, right? It all starts with you as a person. And that can be really hard to ask yourself um, that, that those hard questions because sometimes it can be, yeah, hard to, to figure out what you really want because society says one thing and then your heart says another. Yeah, yeah, I feel that a lot. Like your friend says one thing, your family another, your opinion another one up uh, on top of that. And then you network with some people you respect and then say a, they say a fourth thing that you didn't even think about. And then, yeah, yeah it's, it, it's an interesting world when it comes to, to decision-taking there. But have you have you seen like, what has been kind of like the scariest moment or like the biggest turning point for you? Do you have any, do you have anything that was like, okay, this exact moment was kind of, uh, th- this was like the turning point or this was 
a scary situation for me leaving the comfort zone this felt weird in the moment yeah that was what i was going to say when you thought about like this this life-changing moment like if i would think about a day even was the 31st or 30th of December, 2022, mm. when I got a call from this venture capital fund called Antler. And they wanted to have me on as a founder in their cohort, which is like an accelerator program. And then they require you to do this, you know, on full-time. And that was when I had three things at the table. I had my full-time job. I had my podcast and coaching business. And I had my uh, offer at Antler this VC fund. So I had three mm. things going on and then I needed to take like a really critical choice because it was the last month before, before the cohort started. And I need, I knew that I had to let one thing go and that had to be my full-time job. Right. And that was something I w- had had on my vision board that I, I wanted to be my own boss, but that, that, that trigger was probably having someone that believed in me. So this venture fund, they believed in me and they thought I had the skills that they like I had the required skills to to actually do this and run my own company. So that was when I quit my job. And that was when and this is insane to think about that. You think that when you quit your job, you think that, wow, everything's going to be so nice. You're going to have the freedom. You're going to do everything. You can do whatever you want. Wake up whenever you want. Work whenever you want. Travel everywhere. But what comes with that is like you have the full freedom of your own self, right? Yeah. But with that, it comes like enormous responsibility yeah. and a huge anxiety, at least for me, if I would talk about a personal experience. The moment, my last day at work, which was 31st of January, I was like, I'm not going to have a salary next month that's coming in from the company. Mm. what am I gonna do (laughs) that's I had so many nights where I was like sleepless nights where it's like oh no I can't do the things that I want I can't travel to New York that's expensive I need to have money to do this how can I how can I do this that was when you start to think about okay I I need to figure this shit out and that's when you kind of really really start working and you have the time right to 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 land those deals that you need to do yeah Uh, But that was a life changing moment for me. And, um, you know, being able to stick through that anxiety and just go for it. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah, it's always something good on the other side. Like I refer as, for example, Bob Proctor says it, the terror barrier is like basically a wall and you have to go on the other side. You, You can't climb over, you can't dig under, you can't, you just have to go through it. Sometimes you bounce into it and you get a major setback. You feel the the anxiety, anxiety, you don't know what to do, where to go. But you just have to have to go through it. So uh, anyway, anyone listening to this and are in that situation right now, like trust me, they they just have to go through it. It's it's not possible to to skip it. It's not possible to yeah. Everyone successful on earth today, as long as it's long term, like some short form short term success, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, but everything that comes up really quick must come down really quick. So I haven't seen any long-term success just based on luck because the lucky ones just fumble their money away after a success anyways. So you need 100%. To- I don't believe in luck. I believe that you create your own luck, right? I, I yeah. think you will have the same mindset as me. And I think also it's about consistency and resilience and being able to like not give up. I I spoke with a person when I landed in Copenhagen. I sat down, waited for my bag to come from the trolley or what's it called. And then there was this guy. He looked really successful. He was like 50 years old with a suit and he had like a Louis Vuitton uh, suitcase. I was like, "Hmm." so I started talking to him and then we talked. And then he said, like, at the end of the conversation, he said, like, I was telling him about, he asked me what I did and what I, why I've been in New York. And I told him about my podcast and, and everything that I've been done. And he's like, oh, cool, yeah. Do you earn money on this? And I'm like, yeah, sure, I do. And then he's like, okay, so tell me, what have you learned? What What is the three most important things to, to be successful? And then and then I said like, well, well, I guess you know this because you, you also look quite successful. And he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> he was like full of himself, but also really funny. <laughs> and then one of the things he said like, 
you have to have the power of will, mm. focus, and the third thing, never give up. Mm. And I think most people, if you just continue, continue, just try, 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 never stop, even though you get a no. I try to get a, a lot of focus on that in my, my podcast as well and in my content that I tell people that, you know, even though it looks like I'm living the dream life and I'm living the dream life in New York or wherever I am, behind all that, it's like a hundred emails and a hundred yeah. no's and just one no. No, and just one yes out of the those, right? Mm. And that's what makes a success, being able to stick through those hundred to get to that one yes. Yeah. And that one yes may come tomorrow or it might come in one year, two years, three years, five years. You just got to stick through. Yeah. 100%. I think we could have sat in here for for many, many hours and, and talking about these kind of subjects. It's the... It's the exact subjects that both of us work with with full time and and dedicates our life to. Mm -hmm. um, but again, to the to the people listening, is it anything like last last things that you want to to tell them? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, again, your your Instagram has been on the screen on a, a couple of times, but yeah, just just a just a final word of inspiration to the to the right people listening to this. I think uh, you are the right pe person if you're listening to this anyways. I think it's good that you are starting somewhere and, and starting to get inspiration from other people and try to figure out how pe other people have, have learned and and still and, and got gotten up uh, and, you know, reached a point where they are happy with their life. Mm. But I think, um, you know, if you're insecure, because everyone is insecure, every day is, is a challenge and, and there will always be a challenge. And I think every challenge that you go through will, will teach you something. Um, and if you want to like, you know, excel and do something more, start asking yourself, what are your three best skills and what are your worst skills? What do you really want to do in life? Mm. And um if you struggle to kind of set down, sit down and do this and be resilient with figuring this out yourself, go get yourself a coach. Yeah. Reach out to Tobias or me or someone else that you look up to, someone you want to, someone you are inspired by. You can choose, like you're able to choose. You can design your life in the way you want it. You can choose from what shelf you want. You can choose from the upper shelf if you want to. Hmm. So I think, um, yeah, you are in the ownership of your own life, your own soul, your own heart, your own brain. You just got to make the most out of it and, and make sure that you and are enjoying the ride. So, um, yeah, that's awesome. my, my, my last words. Awesome. And also Thank follow you. Business Henrietta on Instagram. <laughs> Check out it my be, podcast. It will be all over the, all over the screen. <laughs> amazing thank you so much thank you so much and uh yeah I'll, I'll see you in the next one thank you so much for having me to be us and keep up the great work i'm so inspired by you thank you there we go one of the best and biggest norwegian podcasters out there thank you so much henriette for taking the time i truly truly appreciate it remember to follow her on instagram it will be on the screen right now at business henriette on instagram it is truly amazing to see these success stories traveling all the way to new york becoming a podcaster entrepreneur coach and so much more is truly inspiring if you go through this recording and you take some notes and you realize things that you can implement in your life regarding your situation and i am super super grateful for this interview if you want to watch another one of these kind of interviews i'll leave it right now on the screen another interview we did with a covid millionaire and i'm super super grateful that you are watching these kind of episodes and i'll see you in the next one